So let's talk about what constitutes an excellent life. Standards used to be the order of the day in this society, or at least allegedly they were. You know, when the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower, they came here to practice religious freedom. Assumably, they came here to practice religion or to exercise their faith. We can't be sure, though, can we? We, we, we are told that they got on a ship and came to the New World to be free to uh, practice religion. And that assumes that certain standards were at play. Standards for living civilly. David Hume, I discovered in my trek through Baroque music at the graduate level after viewing the movie Farinelli, which is the story of the castrato. Farinelli, uh, I drew a comparison and I wrote a paper. So I found David Hume, the Scottish philosopher, and um, was intrigued by the notions that were sort of the structure of his philosophy, which is that the way we behave in public, the way we comport ourselves, is the essence of a good society. I suppose you'd have to do your own research on David Hume to be certain that I'm summarizing what he represented in history. But the idea that standards should be upheld socially began there, or at least were greatly encouraged by David Hume in the 18th century, I think it was. So if we're going to live an excellent life, I suppose we'd we'd have to establish some standards for our behavior on this planet. Most religions have those standards established. Christians, particularly with whom I am the most familiar, are heavily, heavily influenced by public behavior. Because to a Christian, how one carries oneself in the company of other people should be a reflection of Christ and his love one another commandment. Interesting that we're commanded by Christ to love one another. There you go. There's your act. There's love as an act, right? We're being told to love one another. So assumably, we have to engage in the behavior consciously to love one another. Strongly suggesting that we don't come by it naturally. Most mothers love their children. The hormones draw them to care for the newborn helpless infant and many fathers as well. Not all, and the small percentage that endures postpartum depression or alienation or for whatever uh, inherent personality difficulties each may possess, loving is a bit more difficult. But to live an excellent life, assumably, means at least to my mind today, living a life that increases the quality of life around one for all living things, perhaps beginning with human beings and extending out toward all life. I have a friend who just celebrated, I believe yesterday, his 37th wedding anniversary and in keeping and in line with my reference to my cousins, Phil and Sue, I'd like to point out my friends, Mark and Linda, because an excellent life, everybody who knows Mark and Linda, hands down, would join the chorus 
in support of their excellent life. I have no doubt in my mind about that. I have seen patient, listening, loving, concern, and devoted and loyal friendship from those two toward the people who know them, myself included, and to each other. And I suppose we could ask the question, if two are better than one, does an excellent life depend upon a healthy relationship with one other human being? And should we select that other human being and then love that person. What would the nuns say? What would each nun tell you individually? What would missionaries say? What would bedside nurses say? What would therapists say? What would grandmothers say and grandfathers? What would a child say? How would each of these define an excellent life? Excellence in another plane refers to highly skilled. In my discipline within which most of my energy has been placed, performance music Excellence is a huge deal. Excellence is what gets you the job. And excellence allows you to keep it. And figuring out who the most excellent are is energy spent by a significant select few in charge of deciding who is. Technicians, artists, laborers, healthcare workers, wellness practitioners, lawn care experts, merchants, investment managers. Excellence, being the best, upholding the standards previously established perhaps by that discipline or breaking ground and setting some new standards, raising the bar, raising the standard. But my guess is the elderly among us would have the most valid credentials with which to define an excellent life. And perhaps many of them might decide that they've lived one or they know someone who has. But how do we set about to live an excellent life for ourselves? What's the criteria and how do we establish that? First, we have to decide what our values are. Compare them to those we see demonstrated in the lives of those around us that we have decided are good people worthy of the paths they've chosen. And in our society, the media is flooding us with options that can be misleading, manipulated, contrived, false. So how do we determine the definition of an excellent life and how do we go about living it. Actually, from this video, I'm hoping to generate some commentary. Feel free to offer your ideas. I've ruminated, you know. At this point in my life, have I made being on this planet worth my time to anyone else, to a single living being? I hope for 12 minutes of your life, maybe I've helped you today. I certainly hope and pray 
that if I haven't, I can. So have a good one. Have a good day. Thanks for watching and listening and hearing and seeing. <laughs>